You're listening to the National Oceanography Center's Into the Blue podcast, where we tackle some of the biggest questions facing our ocean today by speaking to experts and voices from the world of oceanography. Hope you enjoy today's episode. Hello, I'm Dr. Zoe Jacobs, and today I'm joined by Shivan Ramdani to talk about autonomous vehicles and how they are developed. So welcome, Shiv. Thanks so much for joining us today. Not a problem. So we've been starting our podcasts recently with a random ocean question to break the ice. So yours is, what is your favorite food to have (laughs) at sea? Well, I think my favorite one would be anything on an open fire, like as everyone will tell you, who knows me, I love to cook and barbecue is my specialty. So anything along those lines. Is that easy to do at sea? Once the, once the chefs on the <laughs> ship help out. <laughs> it has gone quite bad if I'm the point person for food on the ship. <laughs> cool. Okay, so back to the podcast. <laughs> so can we start with uh, you telling us a bit about your background and your journey to knock? So have you always been passionate about engineering? So to start, yeah, I've always had a passion for engineering coming from a very engineering-based family. So my mom and dad, both mechanical engineers. Mm-hmm. Um, so quite a bit of background in engineering. I started with robotics close to five years ago and started to get into that mainly. From getting a passion for robotics, I moved to the UK to do my master's at the University of Bristol mm-hmm. in robotics. Mm-hmm. And from there, just after the master's, I moved to knock part of the MarsDev group working as a software engineer for the robotics systems. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so cool. that's you, my little bit of background. Here, been here ever since. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So your role at NOC is the, um, well, is a robotic system software engineer. So yes. what exactly does that role entail? So the robotic system software engineers, I work primarily on the control systems mm-hmm. for the vehicle and that for the various vehicles we have. So that usually varies from either like sometimes integrating some of the scientific payloads for for the scientists to like the actual control and navigation of the vehicle itself. Mm -hmm. And it's a large, it's a large, large area, but it's basically like we and my team, Mm. we work on getting the fancy toys to do what the scientists want. (laughs) (laughs) That's a great way of explaining it. So I know we have lots of different autonomous vehicles here at NOC. Mm -hmm. Um, Could you take us on a little tour of all the different ones and what they do? Sure. So the ones I work on primarily, we have three types. So we have the most common one, which everyone knows about, which is Boaty McBoatface, Mm -hmm. which internally is known as Autosub Long Range, which Mm -hmm. is the ALR group. Mm -hmm. To give an idea, that is meant for over the horizon piloting, which is, it's meant for long duration missions. Right. When that's deployed, it usually goes off for probably a month or even longer at some times when we're running some of those trials. So that's the common one. The other one is is one of a fairly recent one, which is Mm Autosub, Autosub 5, which is kind of, it's meant for short range missions and like it's more high powered than the long range Boaty McBoat face. Okay. But that one has a lot of imaging systems on it. I see. But in terms of like design and so forth, it's very similar to uh, Autosub Long Range in terms of it's a flight style vehicle, which is like the standard submarine shaped systems. And even more recently, we have the new one I've been working on quite a bit, which is Autosub Hover, mm-hmm. which is, if you think about it, it's kind of like an underwater drone. It allows to go in any direction because mm-hmm. of its design. So it's a hover capable system that does similar to the Autosub 5 in terms of payloads and sensors. And it's meant to run similar missions like that with imaging and so forth. Okay, so are the different vehicles designed for different missions entirely? I guess they are. Yeah, they are. So like, as I mentioned, the Autosub Long Range, Mm -hmm. it's meant for like collecting long-term scientific data, whereas the sensor payloads on Autosub 5 and Autosub Hover, mm-hmm. they have a lot of embers, which is the bathymetry data and bathymetry sensors okay. and so forth. Yeah, I understand. Mm-hmm. Um, and are they all deployed from ships or? It depends on what we need to do. So with ELR, they've done, they've done deployments off the coast from just really regular um, like ships and so forth, just mm. having two of those and then they get deployed and they do over the horizon piloting. Mm-hmm. Whereas um, 
the other two subs, we've primarily done like piloting and deployments from ships because they're meant to be controlled right. more quicker and just they haven't run fairly long missions, so they are controlled from ships and deployed from the ships. Yeah. Yeah, I see. So with like boating at boat face, for example, the long range, do you yeah. just kind of put it in the water and then you just leave it, or or can you control it, or how does it work? Ah, so the how do I go about this? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, complicated questions. <laughs> no, no, no. But um, so in the end, a lot of the portals, they mm. are, in the end, a lot of them can be controlled right. via the, over the horizon, which is yeah. like people being at knock and piloting over the horizon. Right, I see. But it's dependent on the use case. It's a similar portal, but they can be controlled via something called Iridium, which is mm -hmm. a satellite constellation, mm -hmm. or just locally via the Wi-Fi oh, and so forth, yeah. Mm -hmm. So when we're doing those long endurance missions, mm -hmm. you get a lot of people and the pilots being piloted from NOC via the Iridium and the satellites. Mm -hmm. Whereas when we do the deployment of Autosub 5 mm -hmm. and H1, we do local control. And by local control is that same kind of interface, but the missions that we wanted to run is being sent via Wi-Fi and acoustics rather than the satellites and so forth. Right, I see. So in theory, we can control some of these uh, vehicles from NOC, wherever they are in the mm -hmm. world. That's really cool. Um, have you got a particular favorite autonomous vehicle? So I've worked on all of them. So I love all of my children. <laughs> 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 but um, I'm particularly keen on working on other stuff, however, coming from a ro my robotics background, because uh, previously before coming, I've done a lot of work with aerial systems and yeah. quadcopters and so forth. And I've been working with Autosub Hover, which kind of more aligns with mm. my past um, experience a bit more. And yeah. just because I'm doing a lot of projects so with that, I'm actually getting a better chance to input like a lot of, I'm having a lot of um, design decisions and mm. with the deliverables I have, which yeah. gives me a little more freedom and yeah. like able to put my, like my experience and stuff into some of those deliverables and so forth. So yeah <laughs> so this is this also hover one this is this is new right this yes. is the new one you've just been talking about um mm -hmm. yeah i've heard a little bit about this but not a lot so could you kind of go into detail about it um mm. what makes it different to the other vehicles what kind of things are you planning on doing with it sure sure so as i touched on um what i mentioned a bit mm -hmm. earlier it's um its design is completely different from the other two vehicles. So mm -hmm. if you can think about Booty McBoot Face yeah. and the other Sub 5, as I mentioned, submarine shaped, and we will call those flight style vehicles because they have propellers in the back mm -hmm. and an actuator to help them stay and get where they need to. Yeah. The main major difference is auto sub hover is that there's no actu there isn't any actuators in like rudders or anything. They're all controlled by thrusters. Mm. And it's a hover-capable system in that it now has six degrees of freedom. So that gives us a better way of doing surveys and so forth. So that's a major design difference. Mm -hmm. In the end, though, all of it is running the same code base, which is one of the okay. good things there. Yeah. yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so how does a vehicle um, go from concept to reality? Like, What's the process start to finish? <sighs> That's a tough one because a lot of these were kind of, um, <laughs> they were kind of built before I actually even started with them. Yeah. So a lot of them, but the general idea, they will come from various projects. So okay. the proposal will be the project, they have a goal for the project. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we get the designs of the vehicles mm -hmm. and so forth. So to give some examples of that, Auto Sub 5, that started with the A2 Kui project, which stands for Autosub 2000 on the ice. Mm -hmm. And from there, we, the design of the sub came from that. And then similarly, Autosub Hover, it was funded from something called the A2I2 project. And for the life of me, I can't remember <laughs> what that acronym stands for. So many acronyms in this place. So <laughs> many acronyms. <laughs> but the idea is we have the projects. We are, well, we have the ideas of what we want. The project funds it. We design the vehicles mm -hmm. and then that's kind of where it goes from because I am part of the dev team in Mars Dev. We, in Mars, there's two sides. There's the operations and the dev. Mm -hmm. So in the dev side, I'm part of the software dev team, but we also do have the electronics and mechanical devs. And they, it's not, 
to just kind of expand on it. It's not me alone putting in ideas for this development. There's mm -hmm. also the mechanical and electronics team also doing a lot of this work as well. So of need to mention like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of the idea. That's kind okay. of like a quick stop of how, how these vehicles yeah. are funded, developed and thrown into the ocean. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I bet there are some challenges along the way, though. It's not quite as simple as that. Definitely not. No. <laughs> so, yeah, a lot of what we find on Autosub Hover is kind of an example with mm -hmm. it is that um, we, there's always, like, we do, because of how these, these systems are designed, they're meant to be worked in, like, open waters and so mm -hmm. forth, and when we do design process, a lot of, no, not a lot of it, scratchy lot of it. Mm. <laughs> Some things do get, tend to fall by the wayside in yeah. terms of the design. And like, you only find out about them when you actually go on various trials, like right. the Discovery one, mm. DY 166 Expedition yeah. on 152. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what are the next steps for AH1? Um, do you envisage the technology advancing um, and the vehicle changing much over the next couple of years? Or So, um, the next steps is um, we do have a couple more trials come up and deliverables okay. with this iteration. So, in September, we have one upcoming. Mm -hmm. But um, I think there's a long-term plan in that everyone sees quite a bit of potential for the system for it being kind of a six degree of freedom yeah. vehicle versus the flights that we have. So there's a lot of potential for it, but what we found is like from the various expeditions we did recently, mm. there is another iteration in terms of design process that needs to happen before we can do basically repeat the expeditions we have. So, so yeah, there's quite a bit, not a quite a bit of work, but there is plans to improve the system even further. Yeah. That makes sense. I guess it's always about improving, right? Yeah, it's a back and forth process of absolutely. development. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so, is it, but is there anything in particular that you'd like to see in its development? Um, not particularly, because I think we are um, with the current system. We've gotten quite, quite a bit done and mm. proven out quite a bit of what the system can do. Mm. I think um, the next steps is to, the next iteration we're looking at, and I think the the mechanical guys, mm -hmm. they are looking at a better mechanical design for okay. it to improve some of the systems. Like mm -hmm. we did find a bit of issue of it getting caught in currents and so forth. So oh, okay. that's one of the benefit, um, one of the hopes is that we get a, bit, a slightly improved mechanical design. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. I think the, personally for me, I would love to see it do a little more, um, a little more science missions um, once the well once we've improved some of the control systems and the design and so forth. Like it, we've shown like with some of the projects that it can do quite a bit. We just mm -hmm. now need to work forward from those yeah. findings and the influence the next steps. Really, yeah, no, definitely, it makes sense. So to finish off, then I'd love to mm -hmm. talk with you a bit about expeditions. Um, as sea trials, as we've said, are a <laughs> huge part of the development of these vehicles, right? So mm -hmm. haven't you just returned um, from an expedition on the Discovery? Yeah, so I'm DY-166, yeah. Yeah, so what what happened there then? So that one, um, that was the first um, kind of engineering trials we carried mm -hmm. Autosub Hover on. Okay. And from there, we kind of learned quite a bit. Mm. It was a bit hectic because in addition to having Autosop Hover, we had several other vehicles. So it was quite a quite a bit hectic in mm -hmm. coordinating all yeah. of those vehicles because a lot to do. <laughs> a lot to do because um we always needed to find like a slot to in when are we getting our vehicle in, when is yeah, Boaty McBoatface going in, where is Autosop 5 going in. Yeah. It was a bit hectic, but in the end it was a really good experience in terms okay. of like managing several vehicles with mm. the crew of Discovery. Um First time we've carried, as I mentioned, first time we carried Autosub Hover out yeah. there. So we know there's quite a bit we were learning, like deployment, recovery, mm -hmm. and like how it actually acts in deep ocean and yeah. water and how the systems react to those. Yeah. So it was a really good experience. Good. Not, where not sure. hmm? I was just going to say, where where was the trial? So I suck at geography, so I need to, <laughs> <laughs> I need to remember. 
I t- so we was it around the UK? It was. Um, I'm just trying to remember in my head really quickly where it was. Um, so it was off the coast of the Isles of Scilly. Okay. Yeah, and then we were also in Witted Canyon okay, in the Celtic yeah, Ocean. Yeah. yeah. So we then st- we kind of did various survey sites depending on the conditions at the time. So yeah. like the initial plan was Isles of Scilly survey survey one, then go to Witted Canyon, finish there. Mm-hmm. But because of weather conditions and so forth, we had to be, it was easier for us to just transit in between rather than just stay at one site mm. continuously. Yeah, I guess you thought you'd be safe with the weather in July, but <laughs> not not this year. I never trust UK <laughs> no, weather anymore. No, no, not a good idea. <laughs> never. <laughs> um, so weather trials a success on this particular one? I would say so. Like um, a lot of, so I'll, this is one of the engineering trials. So mm-hmm. it was more like, us going here versus um, a lot of the engineering and dev teams going to get familiar with the systems at sea rather than okay. the other expeditions with mm. the scientists and so forth. So it, it definitely was a success because the whole point of it was to learn about the system and its capabilities and where we can improve next and what needs to be done when doing these type of commissionings mm. for these vehicles. So yeah. it was a success. Like we may not have been able to run everything we wanted, but the success in that, for one, we got back the vehicles. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but the next part is it influences how we're going to do in future missions and yeah. so forth and future expeditions and yeah. what's the next set of iterations for design and mm-hmm. so forth. So always a, su- always a success when we go on these trials and yeah. so forth. Great. And then final question. Yes. Um, wondered if you could tell us a bit about some other expeditions you've been on in the past. Have you got any good stories you want to share? <laughs> There's a couple. Mm-hmm. So um I've been on a lot I've been on a lot of the engineering trials mm-hmm. for the various vehicles that we mentioned. And um so that's in Scotland, Plymouth, and off um with Discovery really. So I've been on Discovery, DY 152 expedition and DY 166. Um funny stories. There is a couple. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think um, 152, 152 acted as one of the commissionings for Autosubs 5. Mm-hmm. And with it being commissioned, we were planning to do expedition, uh, missions in shifts. Mm-hmm. So I was part of the night shift. And usually when we do the night shift, I, we would get the sub deployed and we're just monitoring. And one of the funny stories was... Um, on the 152 expedition, since I was on the night shift, I would, um, we would get the, 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 get the ops guys would get the vehicle in the water and we'll just be monitoring to make sure everything is going fine and everything is fine and it's going really handy and I'll go to sleep and when I wake up in the morning and they're just flipping the screen, I was like, this did something weird. I was like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to think if there's any other interesting stories i can mention without like <laughs> raising too much red flags <laughs> to our systems it's all right we won't tell anyone <laughs> <laughs> i think on 166 um 166 was a bit more hectic because this was the first time we went out with auto sub hover mm-hmm. and we there was a there was a not an incident really but more there was um there was a time when we had multiple vehicles in the water and since we were doing the commissioning for auto sub hover at the mm. time, we um we were still learning about like little bugs in the system and what like what we need to be fixed. So there was a time where we had auto sub ho- hover in the water mm-hmm. with another vehicle, and we had to go and recover the other vehicle. And then there was a bit of issue with the navigation on the hover that we were still fixing. So I just said I sent a mission. Please just go to the the safety site and we'll recollect you back. And I just dived. Oh no. <laughs> and then for two hours while it was doing that dive, I was like, well, it's with God now. Because yeah. <laughs> we had no idea where it was. Internal panic. <laughs> it was an internal panic, but mm-hmm. in the end, like all the systems are designed that we will get it back. There's yeah. a lot of safeties that the ops and the dev mm. team put in that we were always going to get it back. We were always going to recover it. We were we always knew the general area where it was, mm. but like while we were covering the other vehicle, there was that two hours while we were we were away from it, 
That was the sickest I felt at this job. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> but we got it back, so yeah. success. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks so much for sharing your stories with us today. It's been great to have you. Thank you. If you're enjoying Into the Blue, please make sure you follow us on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss out on future episodes. New episodes are released every other Wednesday on all major platforms and are also available to watch on the NOC's YouTube. See you next time.